Hi, I'm Alistair Ben and you're watching Expressive Photography. In today's video, I want to ask the question or try and answer the question, can you evaluate your own photography? In the last video, I asked the question, what is good photography and what are the attributes of being a good photographer? The response to that has been huge. And uh, while we summarize all of the data that you've given us and all the answers that you've given us, the whole question of self-evaluation came to my mind. And this is where today's video is coming from. Can we act actually evaluate our own art or our own photography? We certainly have no problem evaluating others. Uh, the whole world revolves around, I like that, I don't like that. Uh, and when we look at other people's photography, we do have that very instant sense of whether we like it or not. And the same goes for pretty much any piece of art, whether it's a movie or a piece of music or a play or a book. Uh, we, we can quite quickly decide, yes, I'm enjoying this. This is for me. This resonates or it doesn't. Even if we look at a consensus, you know, so let's say the new Top Gun movie, which I haven't seen, uh, millions of people are saying it's incredible. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that I would like it. Equally, there's a whole bunch of movies that I have watched that many people didn't like, but I thoroughly enjoyed. So I'm not even sure that a consensus of opinion equals objective evaluation of work. What this really boils down to is that although it's very easy for us to evaluate and assess other works of art, it is extremely difficult for us to do it ourselves. And this is what we have to address today, partly because not being able to accurately evaluate our own work creates a serious problem. By not being able to evaluate our work accurately or effectively, we, have, we basically end up going around in circles. We start asking those questions. Is this any good? Does this have any value? Uh, is this worth sharing? Am I just rubbish? Should I just quit? Um, and unfortunately, this is a real problem for many, many photographers. And it doesn't matter if you're just starting out in your photography or you've been doing this for 30 years. Uh, all of us, I believe, go through periods where we struggle to believe in the work that we're producing. So what I want to do today is cut right back to basics and really look at how can we do this? How can we learn to evaluate our own work to make ourselves generally feel better about the whole process and move forward with a bit more confidence? I often say in workshops that teaching someone how to self-evaluate is a gift. It's a superpower that they develop because it's an instant confidence booster being able to look at your own work and understand what has worked and what hasn't worked or what is good and what's not so good is an excellent skill for us to develop. So what can we evaluate or indeed can we evaluate at all? And the truth of the matter is yes and somewhat no. There are things that we can objectively evaluate and there may be things that are harder to do so. To make this video a little bit more concise, I'm going to split it into two parts, uh, pretty much dividing the craft from the art and the technique from the creativity. We'll start today with the craft or more technical side of photography. So make sure you tune in next week when I am going to be covering the evaluation of our creativity and how to uh, objectively judge and evaluate pretty much what is subjective. Uh, so please subscribe and jump in to next week's video where I'm going to be addressing that. So when it comes down to evaluating the technical side of our photography, it comes down to what I call the failure of execution. Um, when we shot film 20, 30 years ago, the cost of failure was perceived to be very, very high. If you made a bunch of rubbishy slides, uh, they were ruined, but you had to pay money to find out. You had to get them developed to be able to see uh, if they weren't technically good. Uh, so the perceived cost of failure was very, very high. As most of you will probably be photographing with a digital camera these days, the perceived cost of failure is quite low. You can take as many frames as you like, evaluate as many frames as you like, so you're not considering that to be a high cost. However, there is an emotional cost to all of this failure. There's nothing worse than getting back from a shoot, loading the photos onto your uh, computer, and realizing that most of them are, are technically flawed. They're either out of focus or they're not sharp or the depth of field wasn't what you thought it was going to be or they're horribly underexposed or overexposed. And I think that's the first question that we really need to ask ourselves. 
Did you achieve what you set out to achieve? With preview screens these days, it's a lot easier to evaluate our work in the field. Um, the back of the camera, most modern digital cameras have a screen on the back. We can zoom in, we can check, check for depth of field, we can check for sharpness. We can see a histogram that shows us if the image is overexposed or underexposed. And of course, you can have like highlight clipping warnings and all of this technology is designed to make it pretty much foolproof. Yet, many of us still return home with a bunch of crappy photos. Um, and why is that? It's really a lack of discipline. It's a lack of care. And I think this is a byproduct of this perceived low cost of failure. Um, when the cost of failure was high, people were much more meticulous, they were much more fastidious, they paid much closer attention to details um, because the cost of failure was high. So I think the main thing is, is that to look in the field to make sure that some of the things that you need to make sure are correct, are correct. And that is the first stage of evaluating the technical or your performance of the technical side of things. Now, of course, when we shot film, uh, most of the creative process took place in the field. That was your chance to get everything right. Now we have a two part process. Some of it happens in the landscape or wherever it is you're making photographs. Um, and the second half happens in front of the computer. And this is the second place where we have to make sure that we are making the technical and the, and the, the craft based decisions well. And I think the, quite, the second part of this is, did you achieve through your processing what you intended to achieve? I think we can look at three different areas here. There's things like precision, which are if you have a finished image that has lots of sensor spots and wonky horizons, uh, many would turn around to you and say, well, you have not been very precise. Have you been sensitive to the content? Have you taken a low contrast photograph and turned it into a high contrast, super saturated, over sharpened, halo ridden uh, phantasmagoria of contrast um, and lost the connection with the scene that it was that you first engaged with out there in the landscape? Have you produced something that is sensitive to what you hoped to record? The whole concept of clarity of intent this is where we start to cross the boundary into the more creative side of things, but we can still evaluate this on a technical point of view. If your intention was to shock and uh, uh, really um, confront people's senses, then an over-sharpened, clarity-ridden, over-saturated, contrasty uh, horror show may well be uh, what was required. However, I think most uh, photographers have an idea of creating some sense of aesthetic beauty or certainly harmony and, and having things that jar heavily against that can be considered flaws or lack of achieving what we were setting out to try and achieve. So I think both of these things in terms of the precision of our output, the precision of our input, can be rated and evaluated objectively. I think it's very easy to say the raw file was underexposed or overexposed. The depth of field was not up to what we hoped to achieve. Of course, you can take lots of shallow depth of field photographs and that was your intention and therefore shooting it at a, a wide open aperture is a good thing to do. And this again becomes a creative choice and we'll cover some of this next week. So the reality of lack of evaluation, so not objectively trying to measure your performance, is typically stress. We tend to develop an awful lot of stress by not taking due care and attention, not being disciplined enough, not being precise enough, by getting sloppy. And I think this is the most important thing from today's video, is that the perceived low cost of failure because we're shooting digitally, most of us, the perceived low cost of failure leads to lack of care and attention, lack of preparation, lack of attention to detail. And I think these are really, really important points that you should be taking away. 
Now I've been shooting for 22 years and I still come back from shoots with images that aren't always perfect. <laughs> he says modestly, <laughs> only occasionally mind. Um, so at the end of the day, whether you're a new photographer, an intermediate who's been shooting for five to 10 years or a seasoned hardcore photographer who's been doing this for 20, 30, 40 years, attention to detail and that constant check. If you look on the back of your screen and there's some doubt as to whether you have got the perfect exposure or the depth of field or the sharpness that you require, take a second shot, move the focal point, move it around the frame, take half a dozen shots, harvest light, harvest data. By doing so, you're giving yourself every opportunity to return home with some files that you can make, you can combine focus stack, exposure blend, all of these techniques that we use to try and produce a summary of that magical moment that we were experiencing out there in the field. So that's it for today. I hope you find these pointers and suggestions helpful. Uh, if you do, please click the subscribe button, do the old bell notification, jump into the comments. What are the things that you have had struggles with in the past? What are typically the things that cause you the most stress when you get your photographs home from the field and look at them on the computer? What is it that you haven't managed to achieve that you had hoped to achieve? These are the questions that we'll be addressing here on Expressive Photography. These are the things that I've been addressing for over 20 years to try and improve my art and craft. And hopefully I can share my experience with you here on Expressive Photography. Thanks for watching. Tune in next week when I will be looking at uh, objectively evaluating the subjective and how to evaluate your creative intent. Thanks for watching. See you again next week. Bye for now.